Hello, everyone. Uh, we have a big audience. Okay. I, I read an advice about do not get nervous before a conference. Uh, and I read I do not need to eat anything before the conference to not, do not get nervous. And now I'm nervous and I'm starving. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, we actually have the same history that they have. You know, again, times on um, uh, pandemic times. And most of our teacher, uh, sorry, I don't introduce myself. My name is Arnaldo Gosses. Uh, I'm from, I'm from Colombia. I'm representing industrial learning and Wendata from Colombia. We are two brothers, uh, e-learning solution companies, partner for Moodle in LATAM. Um, yeah, um, we have a lot of instances of Moodle that our teacher moved from, give uh, the class on live, move to the house, and try to do a new course uh, on Moodle. Um, I think everyone has um, this kind of uh, problem when they try to move from to on, uh, an online uh, education. Um, they click on create course, they click on create new activity, and yeah, a full list of all activities are displayed. And they say, my God, what is this? How do we start? What is survey? Look as a menu of an expensive restaurant. I don't know what to do. So, we created that course. Think on this. Our teacher um, need some kind of guidance to actually create a course that not only is going to be easy for the student, but are going to follow the standard. And what kind of standard? Actually, our solution is applying right now just the GAN models. But we are thinking on implementing others, um, others methodology. Someday, maybe ABC and APT. I don't know. OK. Um, so what is that course? Um, it's a tool we have developed from the beginning of this year. And um, we are building this as a platform that help with the elaboration of the instructional de design. And it's a system that says some process in the creation and design of the course. So for instance, a system based on intelligent forms that proposes to the teacher the correct resources and learning material that suit the necessity. OK, um, we are working as a web platform, totally responsive. And yeah, in this first version, what we are doing is actually create intelligent form uh, that we uh, use an algorithm of three decisions um, that actually are going to display a different step based on this on the first um, choices you have made for the course. I don't know. Uh, what is your audience? Uh, what you are going to apply? Uh, where are you going? What tool are you going to use to, to, uh, to learn, uh, to teach to the, uh, to the student? Um, are you able to do a conference? If you are not able to do a conference because maybe your students are not online all the time, please use uh, these and other resources that maybe can help you. That's the thing. Um, what is these features? Um, we are working on the conditional design, uh, conditional logic guidance that I have speak before. Uh, it's based on the questionnaire standard because actually we are going to um, give to the user at the end of, in the first step, we're going to display this, um, this script, multimedia script on PDF that actually they can uh, use it to, to create the courses in, on Moodle. Uh, for next version, actually, what we are going to do is uh, connect uh, this tool with, directly with Moodle so the teacher, after they fill out all their forms, uh, the activities and the course and everything else is going to be created directly on Moodle with all these details. Um, where our developing path, our roadmap for the next three step is going to be um, releases in December, in our first release, is going to be accessible to the users. And after that, in the version 2, we are going to make the implementation of the Moodle API. And in the version 2, we are going to expand uh, to another methodologies. Uh, this is just for the 2023. OK, what functionalities do we have right now in the, in the application? First, we made a diagnostic 
Okay, in this, video, in this diagnosis, we ask to the teacher, what is your audience goal? Uh, what age? Um, how many times are you going to be able to teach them? Uh, because we need to know about the course length. And again, we ask more for the environment than for the course. We ask for the course in the introduction. Ah, what is your course title? What is the objective to learn, to, to, do, uh, to teach to the student? And this is more related with, with, the, with the course. But the diagnostics is more for the environment you have. I mean, your student have or not uh, that connection to the internet that we can to rely on. Um, all, all, all counts in, in, in that part. Okay, after that we start with the module. And um, here we go. For each module, you, we need to follow eight steps. Again, we are, we are going to use the Gantz model. Um, I don't know, in the future, we are thinking on applying any model because, mm, I mean, they are the most important, the most um, uh, um, applicable for, for us. Uh, we have a big um, team of teachers that help with the instructional design uh, elaboration. I mean, they decide how is the best, um, how is the best tool that suits the necessity to, um, to follow this model in this step. Um, again, um, I'm going to talk again about the conditional design because it's used, it used an algorithm of three decision in the backend. And I am a developer, one that is creating that, so let me talk about this baby. Uh, the algorithm, every time we need to apply a new step, actually the, the three grow and grow. Uh, right now we have a lot of, a lot of code in the database, in the, in the backend that is growing because we are adding more step every time we, we, we add a new, uh, a new activity. Uh, that's, that is uh, being a, a big job, um, mainly uh, because, I don't know, the instructional designer, depending on the installation, um, can display more and more step in, the, in our forms. Okay, I think that is not really explained, but this one, see, yes. The teacher path, that is, that is what we're talking uh, about the selection and the previous selection. Uh, the teacher path should follow a um, very precise route and fill very precise forms so you will get the, really, uh, the course standard at the end of this step. Okay, we have applied the Ganget model in this version as you said, uh, I have told you before. And uh, how, do, do, how do we do that? Um, by instance, the phases. In the first one, we want to make a student want to learn the contents, so motivate with something. In the, in the second one, with the apprehension and attention, please giving a catch uh, question. Um, correlate the pressure knowledge with the new one. Um, in this step, we actually recommend to the teacher to create a new activity that, uh, that may a correlation with a previous knowledge uh, that the you student have. Uh, the memory rotation, as you're practicing with the student, um, please create a task that helps the student practice this new topic. Um, simulate and recall, the sample and demonstration of the knowledge. This one is from the teacher. The second one is actually from the student, and this time is when we create that resources and activity. E, the feedback and reinforcement. We need to hear feedback from the student to know if they have applied or not uh, this knowledge and if the student have learned it or not. Okay, in the first, uh, final step, we have developed an evaluation step. The, we recommend it to the teacher what will be the best quiz method if, we, if he um, need to create a multiple choice or single choice activity. Things like that that will suit um, the, this standard that they have applied. And all this is based on the previous selection. So it's depending on the teacher objective, as what we are going to recommend. Right now we have uh, what we call um, a few versions of this. Actually, we made this just to show uh, the potential of this tool. This is datacurso.com, and it's available for use if you want to know a little more about uh, how the tool is going to work. And yeah, I think it's 
for its product view. And that's all. Any question? Thank you very much, Anan. Uh, do we have any questions from anyone? Thank you. No? I had a question. Um, I was just wondering, can the teachers multi-select the pedagogical tools that they, you know how you had a question about what pedagogy do you want to use? Can they select multiple or one? No, um, yeah. Uh, right now, um, we don't ask for the pedagogic model because um, we, are, we, are, we have one applied already in the code. But actually, where that is, will be the first step. In the institutional level, maybe, or in the teacher level, we are going to ask, OK, what is um, the best pedagogy model that suits the necessity of the institution or the teacher what is going to apply for this class? And then after that, all the, all the platform will change. Because depending on which pedagogy model we are, we are going to apply, depending on all the other selection. One other question I had was, do you have a plan to trial this in a particular school or education institutions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the free release will be totally free. Totally free. I mean, for, for, uh, uh, for common users. And we have a pilot that is, uh, is on three institutions right now, three different universities, small groups of teachers are going to use this, this platform. And after that, we have talked with um, another Moodle partner that will like to give us some feedback. So we are going to allow them to have um, very um, this presentation of the product. So we'll give um, some feedback from them and we're going to apply that, uh, that feedback. So yeah, yeah, it's a very tested tool. Oh.